Hello and welcome to a new series I'm going to be doing as Fascist France. This is a series I've wanted to do for a little while. We had a poll up on the channel and this is the route that won. So this is going to be a path where we try to bring home Quebec, dominate the Middle East, bring in the lowlands and parts of Africa, and overall just spread our influence throughout the world as a more nationalistic version of France. However, normally when you go this route, you actually end up joining the Axis and you have two major allies right on your border. So I've done a few tweaking to add for a more of interesting scenario. Primarily, we've got Italy, as well as Poland, Romania, Yugoslavia, and even Ethiopia and Spain, both allied or aligned with communist powers. So this should beef up the Soviet Union and allow a bit of a counterbalance and take Italy out of the equation. Additionally, for Germany, we've got a monarchist faction that's sort of set up to, to go here. We've got Germany, Austria-Hungary, Greece and Turkey both aligned to join the central powers uh, and even though a lot of times these AI behavior setups don't always go the way we plan this should be an interesting solution to add a little bit more variety to the game and allow us to feel a little more isolated. All right so first things first let's go and just take our army and you can just shift well, you could shift left click that, but I dismissed the notification. So we'll go ahead and put all of our army into a single unit. And there's going to be other units over here, but let's just get all of them and put them into a single army. I don't know if we actually have any over here. I don't think we do. We do have the ones in Africa. Let's get those over here as well. Let's get our whole army moved over to the mainland, get them training up. Now let's go and pick our first focus. So the first thing I'm going to go for is revive the national block. This is going to be important. It's going to give us some additional political power and some trade deal opinion factor. That's not really super helpful. But for the duration that we have, Pierre, this is going to help with that political power gain and get us going a little quicker because we need political power. As for research, let's pick up the basics, machine tools, construction, and of course the tech. That looks pretty good. For our factories, we can just put them on guns for now. Going to need a lot of guns. We can stop producing the tanks. Don't need those. We're, when we get tanks, we're going to use different tanks. We'll take a look at the ships in a second. But I did want to take a look at our production. Uh, as for this, when you're playing France, you really only need a little more sieves. Like, you only need a few more. So what we're going to do... So we're going to pick like four provinces, any with 80%. We're just going to max those out. For the rest of the duration, we're just going to queue up mills in every province that's 80%. And that's basically going to do the job for us. Though I think we will actually, before we do anything, I think we're going to build infrastructure up in these provinces. And I think Bacardi is the one we've queued up here. Uh, let's see, so we've got those four. We want to kind of sync this. We did the center. Let's uh, do a different one instead. No, okay, we did that. So we're just going to queue up the infrastructure there as well. And this will just mean that we're getting the highest amount of build, build efficiency because we know we're going to be maxing out the buildings in that province. So the infrastructure is useful. Plus we have resources there. So it's also useful for that reason. Uh, later on, we'll probably want to get a supply up up here, but we won't worry about that just yet. So we'll get those divisions moving over there. Let's take a look at our ships. I think we just want to put them into a single fleet for now. Start it training up and not really worry about it. The only consideration is we really don't have oil. Now for the planes, I like to do something specific when it comes to the planes in France. Because they have a bit, I have a bit of a pet peeve when it comes to France's Air Force. So let's move that over. Let's go and unpause the game and just let it run. And I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So we got all those planes over here. And a lot of these, some of these are actual French planes. And I believe, I actually, most of them are, but they're like really outdated interwar planes. What I like to do is I just like to dismantle all of them and immediately put them up on the new international market. Like, I just like to get rid of these planes. They're no good. They're not really going to help us. As soon as we go to war with anybody, in which case it may or may not be Germany. Um, 
Not sure. I haven't actually done a test run in this scenario we've done. But uh, whoever we end up going to war with, those planes are going to get shot down almost immediately. So I'm really not really not expecting much from those planes. So I'd rather get our own good planes that are actually well made and uh, not use fodder. Let's simplify things. Let's change it all to the default template. And I don't think we selected all of them. Let's get them all set to the normal default template, really simplify things, and just start training them up. We'll accept anyone who wants to buy our guns at this high, high price, because that's going to help our industry out and help us build more. Which, by the way, if you're curious, all that does when you sell, it gives you IC, like industrial capacity, essentially. And it just like almost shoots it directly into your your building progress here. It's almost kind of imperceptible, really. But uh, as far as I understand, that's how it works. So, uh, but you can see we're getting this infrastructure done. And as soon as that is done, we'll start building those sieves really fast. So, Italy's still doing their war in Ethiopia. But the only change, I think, is now Ethiopia should get Soviet aid if they finish it in time. So we finished Revive the National Block, and you can see now Germany's civil war is going on here. So what's really exciting about this scenario is it allows us to explore things that don't normally happen when you're playing. Uh, generally, the game can be a bit dull on historical, um, especially if you're a power like France, so you change the scenario up where you're not actually going to have to defend against Germany. Um, where you actually align with them in this scenario. And I wanted to switch that up a little bit. I think we're going to rush for laissez-faire. This gives you, first of all, it gives you the economy efficiency after two years and those research bonuses for industry. We could also ban communism. And this is really important because this also increases fascist support over time and it removes the political violence. But we're going to get laissez-faire first and then ban communism in all likelihood. So we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, we got our ships moved over. We're going to start training these. Albeit it's going to be pretty inefficient since we don't have any oil. But that's okay. As for our spy agency. We could get this created. And I'm tempted to do so. But it's just... It's a bit much of an investment. I'd rather build our economy up in the early game. And get that snowball going. A little faster. Let's get the second uh, one down the path here for the for the research. Get that mechanical computing. Get that research bonus. Um, and yeah, you can see our political power gain is painfully slow. I suppose we should probably go over the political malus that France comes with. If you're not familiar, there's political violence, which is kind of this ambiguous, like, folk. It doesn't actually tell you when it triggers, but essentially it's on decisions usually or focuses rather in here or certain events or decisions you make uh, and it kind of affects your stability you get rid of this by banning communism and uh, that's probably what we're going to do the other thing is full employment um, this just reduces our recruitable population you can deal with it through i believe these down here and expand citizenship yes yeah, see this removes it if you encourage immigration I think you can also affect it through some of these down here in the fascist path. But uh, regardless, there's also the Maginot line, which isn't a huge debuff. It gives a negative to planning speed. Um, so not a big deal. Uh, there's disjointed government. This is, the, this is the worst one. It costs us a ton of political power, lowers our stability, and halves our surrender limit. And I believe because of this, it's kind of a hidden thing. But if you go to war and have low enough stability, then you will basically go into a civil war. But the nice thing is if we can get enough support for the party, for the fascist party, we can get rid of disjointed government really fast. I think this is actually the fastest route to get rid of it because it's a, it's a nasty negative spirit. So getting rid of that early is huge. You can see we're already out of oil, by the way. Yeah, already out of oil. And, um, yeah, we're, we're out of oil. And uh, that's that's not great. Italy abandons the treaty. 
I was going to say, it's too bad we can't get out of the treaty. Um, you just don't get enough political power to really do it. Plus, if we did, we'd want to spend it on something else, such as the silent workhorse or even increasing our uh, stability through improved worker conditions. Now, this is an event that you don't always actually get, and it's actually a good one. It's a good one. I like I like when I get this one, so this is lucky, considering we're recording, and usually things don't go right when you're recording. So, um, this is basically an event where your people will demand you actually mobilize your economy. This gives us war support and gives us early mobilization over civ economy, which is, I mean, hey, that's actually really good. And I don't even think we have to demobilize our economy when we pick that up because our, our people actively demanded it. So that's actually a really nice bonus. And I would say if you're playing along, generally, you can like restart or even save scum to get that one a little earlier. I think we're going to go ahead and pick up banned communism. Going to get rid of that. Yes, it's going to bring our stability down a little bit, but it's also going to help it. Now, as for our next one, we got that nice bonus from laissez-faire. I think we're going to pick up the dispersed industry. That's going to help our factory output, but maybe we want the product efficiency cap. Usually this branch is the best one to go down. Like first, if you're rushing, you want to kind of start from the left and go over. Um, I didn't actually realize that when I first started playing the game. I thought this was the least useful one, but it really, it's crazy how many more like guns you can get through production efficiency. We're going to pick up the dispersed industry first though, um, since I think that's a good one to pick up with the bonus. So we're going to do that. We, we kind of have an inefficient economy right now anyway. Uh, let's see. So we've gotten some Navy experience as well. And we, we just hit the 75 political power, so it's going to start saying we can get military leaders. We could get one of these, start getting army XP, but I just don't think that's the most useful for us right now. Okay, so this is interesting. This is our first kind of, aside from the German Civil War, this is our first real, like, interesting event. So there's a, the Black Lions have orchestrated a coup against uh, Haile Selassie in Ethiopia. Okay, interesting. So there's a new leader here, and it's communist. They're not in the common turn directly, but this is pretty interesting considering, you know, I didn't actually, I didn't actually appreciate this, but I have Italy going the communist route. I believe though, once they actually flip communist, they drop their war in Ethiopia, from what I understand, because they it's a civil war, I think. Uh, at least when I've played Italy as communist. Oftentimes you uh, are no longer at war with Ethiopia, regardless of what the state of things are. So we got another one. I think we're going to go ahead and we could get the construction. And I think right now with our inefficient economy, even though I was just saying how good this is, I think we are going to pick up the construction too, because I think getting our economy, you know, snowballing, getting it built early, Utilizing the infrastructure bonuses, getting our civs built fast is going to have the hugest, like, long game impact. So we've banned communism now. You can see that hurt our stability a bit. We could go and get Protect the Rights of Men. Uh, this, this, by the way, is the problem with the French focus tree. I mean, 70 days for 5% stability is ridiculous. Meanwhile, you have, like, s uh, some focus in Sweden that gives you, like, insane bonuses. And it's like 35 days. You know, like really good, really good bonuses for like 35 days. I mean, one's in the Soviet focus tree. France, France's tree is an older tree. As a result, we get, we get focuses like this. So, but hey, I mean, there's still some good stuff in here. Uh, we might get that. This would help our economy. The reality is we don't really need guns that much right now. But uh, we could also get this one which would lower stability well it gives us decisions it gives us the ability to take this choice once we're over 50 percent so there's no point picking either of these up yet um the only other thing we could do is do begin rearmament get those mills to value the frank get that going early but that lowers our stability more i think the only real option for us is to protect the rights of man get that focus done get that extra stability. I think it's going to help in the long run. 
and we, we needed to kind of progress a bit further down that part of the tree, so we're going to take it. Got Dispersed Industry, and we can get another one of these. We could get this one, but I think we're going to wait. I think we're going to wait, and we're going to use that to... Well, we could grab this one for the dockyard output. I mean, that would kind of give us what that focus would have given us. That'd get us further down the tree. But I'm thinking what we might want to do is pick up tank tech early. And I know that's kind of crazy because, I mean, look at that ahead of time bonus, but I always like to pick up tank tech a little bit early because I like to get it built earlier. So maybe that's a consideration. The synthetics could be useful too. Get that early. Um, I don't know if we'd really build that early on though. That's a nice bonus though to that. And I mean, oil's gonna be a problem. And I don't think oil's ever gonna not be a problem. And so I'm actually really tempted to do that. It's not something I would usually do, especially with such a good bonus, but I think I am gonna do it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna try and get us some synthetic refineries early and try and solve that oil, oil problem early in the game. Get it built so that by the time war comes around, we actually have a reserve for our fleet. In terms of the Navy, um, which by the way, I am going to be working on a Navy guide soon. And uh, we recently hit 300 subscribers, so I was initially going to do it as a 300 subscriber special, but I'm really, really working on it right now to make a very comprehensive guide that goes into fleet templates, how you, how you actually, you know, have your different fleets um, for convoy raiding or escorting or for patrols and how you should actually align those together and get the best benefit also as well as even like some some meta strategies with these like new armored light cruisers people are using that seem really disgusting um so auto has assumed the crown in hungary let's see so we could go down this branch of course but uh, we're not going to because this would lock us out of the path we're trying to go down. This would... I think this eventually flips around, actually. We could get economic devaluation, modify the inefficient economy, which could be interesting. We could begin rearmament, or we could get the cores in Algeria, right, to deal with our, our uh, recruitable pop issues. So those are all options. Naval rearmament, get those dockyards early. Lots of good options here. Or we could devalue the franc and lower that stability again. And I think that's what we're going to do because I want to work towards that a little bit. So I think we are going to take that. So nationalist Spain has declared war on Spain. That war is starting off. I'd love to like send volunteers, but we really can't. As France, uh, you can intervene through this choice, but it, like so many of the options like tank your stability, it's it's hardly worth it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pick up the silent workhorse. Uh, we have disjointed government, but that kind of helps our political power issues. So I'd rather do that now. Um, one thing they did change is now that we have early mobilization, the use of devalue the franc actually isn't as high as it would have been. It's no longer an additive thing. In the past, you would have actually been able to actually get 0% um, sort of civilian factories, right? Where you're losing these factories to your civilian economy. But now it's at a point where it's multiplicative. So you can never get rid of all the factories you're giving away anymore because they changed it. Also, we're going to go and accept all of these. So, at a certain point, bonuses like this minus 15% stop being as useful. Um, you can actually see that with the focus tree in China, uh, where you, I believe, ban the opium trade. It's some ridiculous subtraction to your consumer consumer goods, but it's it, it's deceiving if it's actually that useful to begin with. So we've got the civil war in Greece. I'd love to be able to like send volunteers in this, though. I don't think we have any skin in the game here. In fact, thinking about it now, we're pretty isolated. I don't know if there's going to be really any major fascist powers 
at all. So we're kind of going to be on our own and kind of against the rest of the world. By the way, we're going to pick up these other industry techs. Yeah, I mean, unless we can do something with Nationalist Spain if they win. Though, again, we gave Spain the edge and they're going to be seeking Soviet aid. So they're going to be in an even better position, most likely. Uh, we did go for the radios here, but I think I am actually going to go ahead and pick up the, the medium tanks. And we're going to go for... Let's look at these bonuses. I mean, this gives speed, lowers armor and reliability. Medium tank designer. I mean, what do you get? You get a lot of breakthrough production output. Yeah, I mean, that's... Still get some speed here. I mean, maybe we want to go for the medium tank designer. I mean, those are the only tanks I'm really going to use. Let's do it. Let's try out the medium tank designer in this playthrough. And we'll, we'll go for that. But what I was going to say is, as for the Navy, we're actually going to focus on using carriers, I think. Using carriers and planes and uh, going for that. And while we're speaking on it, let's go ahead and see if we can't queue up our dockyards so they're actually being put to the best use. You start with a ton of ships queued up as France. Let's go and get rid of these. They're just little, you know, dinky submarines. Let's also get rid of some of these extra ones. That looks good. We'll finish these two off. They're so close to being done. So we may as well. We've devalued the Frank and the Civil War in Italy has started. And you'll notice it actually extends to Ethiopia as well. They're still at war with the fascist Italian Union. No, that's the the one under Mussolini here, the Repubblica uh, Social uh, Social Italiana, right? And then you've got the Italian Union, which is the communist faction. Uh, but they're no longer at war with them. But they they don't look like they're in such a strong position. They've 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 got the North here. They've got Eritrea. They they seem to be in a better position. Uh, I'd rather be in their shoes right now, but who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? Again, could intervene in Spain. Actually, a 35-day focus on this focus tree, by the way. We could pick up this 5% stability here. Develop the Metropole. Let's take a look at our fascist support right now. So, combined, these need to be 50. Right? They need to add up to 50 here. Um, so, and that doesn't really help us there. So, what we might want to do could begin rearmament or get those cores or modify the inefficient economy let's go ahead and utilize leagues get the focus done just get it done now and uh, I know that's not the most useful for us right now but I just want to I want to have the option to go ahead and pick up that other focus as soon as we hit those requirements uh, we are getting more political power now which is great so we will eventually be able to pick up the... Let's see, where is he? The one that I'm looking for. I thought we could get him. Okay, we will once we're able to utilize the leagues. We'll be able to get him. We could have gotten it earlier. Right? We could have gotten it a little earlier if we saved the political power. Picked up this focus. We would have been able to get that fascist support up sooner. But I just don't really think it's necessary. We've got the P Polish peasant. I mean, oh my God! Look at the border gore here. This is what are the what are why are there so many colors here? What is going on? It's very colorful, very colorful up here. We've got a rainbow. That 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 should be the thumbnail. If I was going to do a thumbnail, I, I would do that. I'm not really sure who would want to click on that though. That's uh, that's disgusting. Um, that yeah, we've ruined. We've ruined the map. Yeah, you can see the world is actually just in complete chaos right now. Everybody is fighting each other right now. This is uh, it's pretty interesting. But we might actually be the most stable country in Europe, believe it or not. Okay, so we picked up that focus. I think... So we could actually go ahead and go down this, this path, but we're not going to do that. Not going a monarchist route. Uh, but you see, now that we've gotten this, we can pick up the Freedom Front and get a ton more fascist support. And that'll give us what we need to flip over. So we're going to go ahead and take that and get ready. Let's continue training our divisions. 
by the way, just so we get some extra XP. It's not much, but it's something. We're going to put some into artillery. We can take these focuses. I would recommend not doing that since it lowers your stability and you really don't need to take it. Like, you just don't. Um, but yeah, as you can see, when you do it this way, you don't actually have to hire the, the demagogue. I just don't really think you need him. Uh, instead, what you should do is probably save your political power for the guy you get through here, which gives you weekly stability and more political power gain. I think this is the one focus tree or country where I think you actually get essentially two silent workhorses. Um, plus that stability bonus is nice. Okay, so we've got the synthetic refineries. Uh, I say we go ahead and pick up the radios. I take that back, actually. Let's get the carrier to tech with the task force. Uh, and that's another thing about France, by the way. They have really nice MIOs. Are they bonuses that are big enough to really matter in the long run? No, but they're still really good. I think we're going to get the Im improved worker conditions and fix our stability. Um, I know we could probably wait, but when this focus fires, that's going to lower our stability quite a bit because we're a democracy right now. And so the amount of support we have in our party affects our stability. You get a stability bonus related to your party popularity. So we're going to hold off on that. Spain requests aid. We're going to turn them down. We're not going to help them there. Uh, well, I, I think it was probably this Spain because we're a democracy, but we're not going to help them. As you can see, we're down to 41%. But, even though we're down to 41%, we can go ahead and take National Regeneration, which we're going to immediately do. Some new things, the Chinese faction, Hindenburg, but probably the most important, Austria votes to unite with Hungary. So you can see Austria-Hungary is growing. They now border the German Empire, which changed their name. They're no longer the military junta. So that's an interesting development. It seems like the Peasant Union is winning. They don't always, in my experience. I've seen them lose a few times. Did we finish this? We didn't finish that yet. We could get some support equipment, but I think we're going to get the radios now. Since I like to pick those up a little earlier. No matter what. Let's take a look at our ships. They're continuing to train, and we're just going to make our oil problems even worse. But speaking of oil problems, let's go ahead and build some synthetics up in these provinces and let's get those building as soon as we finish that sieve and we'll kind of mix in these mills with it as well so those are building but i want to get some synthetic synthetic stuff going on now rather than waiting on it all right and let's see so the communists won in estonia they're still at war in latvia and it looks like they might be losing. And this guy, this guy looks interesting. I don't know, something doesn't look right about him. But they're still at war in Lithuania. It looks like they're losing. But I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, a bit of a stalemate going on here. Okay, the uh, these guys have risen up here. And they they don't normally get that, I don't think. As far as I can tell. And in terms of Greece, these guys are the... See, I don't know who rises up to f join the Central Powers. I would assume that would be George II here. Yeah, that would make that would make sense. It would be George II. I believe the Hellenic Republic is more allied aligned, generally speaking. Also, they start with Athens. Yeah, but it doesn't look like they're going to win here, the Kingdom of Greece. However, in Italy, it does seem like the communist faction is going to win. At the very least, they've been pushing them back. In Ethiopia, they are also losing their territory. So, Ethiopia is gaining a stronghold down there. Lithuania was annexed. So, the communist power won there. And they also won in Lithuania. Which, I, I just looked over there and it seemed like they weren't winning. And there we go, we've now flipped over, we have our new name, and we have our new flag, which is quite interesting. 
but let's go ahead and see if we can't get rid of disjointed government. We're going to try and do that immediately. And again, I mean, if we can get rid of that in 1937, that's a that's a good deal. That's way earlier than democratic France is going to be getting rid of that. So, I mean, that's quite nice. We have flipped, so we can abandon the naval treaties as well, which is a huge benefit to us. Again, we need to be careful because we've got a more aggressive UK and a more aggressive United States. So, even though the US is mostly going to be intervening in wars, the UK might want to do something different. I mean, I, I don't know how it's going to play out considering we've got the German Empire here and uh, they're vehemently anti-communist. So, I don't know what Czechoslovakia is going to do in regards to that. So, it may be we end up striking first. It may be, and be the UK strikes against us in a unique or interesting way. I'm not entirely sure how it's going to play out. That's kind of the wild card factor of this playthrough so far. Got the new carrier hulls. Let's go ahead and pick up a new research. I say we get... Well, we could get this uh, slightly ahead of time. Or we could get the interwar artillery. I think we're going to grab that. And get this new trait for our MIO. So this is our task force builder. These are for our carriers. So it's important that we... Well, they're also for cruisers and destroyers too. So I guess well, we can use it for that as well. But I think we're just going to get the max speed. Or the max range could also be useful. Either way, you're using more fuel. So I think we're going to get the speed. Definitely get the speed. And Carlos Spain has actually risen up. So you've got your monarchist faction there. Which is interesting. Don't know if they're really going to be getting much help from anyone. Uh, there are monarchist factions here such as in Hungary and Germany. So maybe, maybe something could happen there. Now, I think we can actually send volunteers now. How useful would that be? I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if we have much skin in the game here. I mean, we could help National Spain get some, could get some uh, XP maybe, but it's, uh, it's, it's looking rough. I mean, maybe we could help Poland. Send volunteers there. Eh, possible. What other wars are there? We could try and help the Italians. Which, I mean, that's usually a bad idea. Can we get involved in Greece now? So these guys would be joining the Central Power, so we'd actually probably want to help out the Hellenic Republic, even though they're a democracy. So maybe we wouldn't want to do that. So, I mean, let's, let's, let's try and get involved in some of these. Before we close out the video i think we it would make sense i don't know i mean i think we're seeing the writing on the wall for both italy and spain but maybe we try and help them anyway uh we don't have great org but let's let's send jean here let's send our volunteers in uh we can pick up a non-aggression pact with them as well let's let's help mussolini out why not and uh of course there we go so I think we can send four. Let's send them in. And those will be transferring. And who knows, maybe we can stem the flow. Maybe we can prevent an outright victory and potentially keep a major out of the faction. And because look, I mean, even though we set the scenario up, we can still try and tweak it a little bit to weaken or delay certain events from firing. So they can go a little bit more to our favor. Uh, we could let this slip into the hands of Turkey, but I think we're going to, as a fascist power, I think we're going to oppress the Turks and deny them their desire of getting Hetay. All right, so I think what we're going to do as our next focus is pick up the integralism. I think that's going to help us a lot. We're already going to be making a lot more political power, but... This is what the map looks like now. Uh, war going on in Poland. War in Spain underway. War in Italy. War in Greece. The map is active. Things are happening. Who knows exactly what will go down. If you're enjoying the new series, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought. And I'll see you in the next episode.